Uganda, like many other African countries, still offers education packages that were introduced by colonial masters. Now here, the weather is sunny. With this curriculum, one starts school with little or no knowledge of what they will become after the education cycle. Do you know there are people who are clever but do not know how to write exams? And they are judged at the end of the day that they are foolish. This is a disaster in Africa. Over the years, this has delivered more job seekers than job creators, despite the huge sums of money injected in their education. An average Ugandan sells their land and cattle or any saving the bank for the child to obtain education. Their hope is that when the child completes education, they'll get a big job. They'll then buy for them more cows, build them a bigger house, and put more money in their bank. You know, as I do, that those parents are very disillusioned today because their children come back with photocopies of degrees and there are no jobs and so they ride motorcycles. And they know too well you don't need a degree to ride a motorcycle. Many governments in Africa spend billions and billions of dollars in the form of bursaries and scholarships in the hope that their citizens will get good education to come and develop their countries. Years turn in, years turn on, they are not superpowers. They are still called developing countries. That gave us the thought, what is the issue? What's the problem? It is on this basis that some African countries are now borrowing a leaf from countries in the developed world, like the USA, to adopt a more informed education cycle. With the help of an anthropobiometric machine, parents are able to first secure a litany of their children's abilities, thereby deciding on which career path they take. If you went and discovered your innate potentials, then you'd be somebody else. And why do the whites, if they find that their child is only good in physical education, even the tuition teacher is brought only for that? In Africa, you are brought a tuition teacher for your weakness, if you're weak in mathematics. So you struggle all along in your weakness at the expense of your strength. So we changed and we said, learning is no longer about your weakness. Learning is embedded in your strength. And therefore, the first step, just like doctors do, before I give an injection, before I write a prescription, I must do diagnosis and confirm. Although the symptoms are the same, let me confirm this fever is not malaria. Oh, it is pneumonia. So we're doing diagnosis first. Professor Humphrey Obora, one of the promoters of these technologies, gives a synopsis of how this machine is going to be a game changer. It is a 3D optical sensing equipment. Your camera that you have there in your phone is a basic 3D optical sensing equipment. How does it take your picture? It sends light and it takes your coordinates and it reconstructs you and it paints to give you an image. Now in this other case, the anthropobiometry takes you the same, takes the coordinate, but instead of doing your image, it draws imaginary, imaginary, it doesn't get into your body. It draws imaginary lines. Then it presents to me an image called a body model. Where signals pass quickly, it paints green. Where it passes ish-ish, it paints yellow. And where there are energy blockages, it paints red. So when I look at it in front of me, and I see the greens are to the left upper side of the brain, for a four, five, six-year-old child, see how easy it is for me to predict their career 20, 30 years in advance. The machine has reportedly had a number of successes in Kenya, the first African country to embrace this technology. Because you've asked, I didn't want to go this far. I have a parent, actually this is a story that was carried out by KTN in Nairobi. There's a young man called Matthew Karungu who was born with cerebral palsy. So the story that came is that the mother was hiding him in the house. So we followed up. 
and we encourage the parent to bring him for assessment. We found him to have a very active brain, particularly on the left side. For me to tell them, for the sister also was not going to school to take care of him and the help, it was a bit of a fight. But may I inform you today that Matthew Karungu today has a master's degree. I took him for internship at Communication Authority of Kenya, which is a government institution just like the one in Uganda. And he has a master's degree at the head of strategy. Going by his assertions, we were intrigued to check out on some of the said success stories in Kenya. To say what Professor has offered us as a family is an opportunity for Matthew. For Professor Obora, introducing these technologies has not been a bed of roses. He recalls some of the horrific experiences he underwent just to convince people to appreciate how valuable these technologies are in career development. When he brought the machine, a camera, people said it's going to burn people. You know our, our Africans. And then the normal statement from an Africa, if they don't know anything, they say, ah, to just scare you, that's money fake. We have not heard about it, it must be fake. You don't know, you're not part of the research and you know it is fake. Really? We do have, the people, and I must tell you this in advance, the people we try to help are themselves hell. And they sit in their comfort zones. You've got to be different. Remember, a pioneer is always fought and called names. I am one of those who has gone through that. By the time even Pielo Lumumba was joining me, he knew I withstood the test of time. It's not been easy, a long journey, nearly 20 years. Uganda joins the list of the few African countries set to benefit from this technological advancement thanks to the World Talent Federation that has already donated an anthropobiometric machine. To book your appointment, okay, uh, it takes about 40 minutes for the assessment. There are three stages. Before you reach the machine, it's not just going to have a machine. You don't walk to a hospital and just go to uh, a blood testing equipment. There you must see the nurse and the doctor first. And there's a reason for that. So we also have those procedures, oral screening and psycho screening, before we go to the anthropobiometric uh, kit to get your image. And then it takes about three to four days, if it's a normal case, to get your report. Um, because this is a private enterprise, it will have pricing, but pricing will be dependent. Uh, our rule from the Federation, there must be people who must be assessed for free. Uh, these are the poor gifted. A poor gifted, like I say, the TV, like your station has highlighted, a child with a unique ability. And the government doesn't know what to do with them. Of course, they always don't know what to do with them. Uh, we'll bring that child, we'll assess that child for free. It's part of the reason we have donated the machine. Professor Obora makes an appeal to Ugandans to seize this opportunity and catch up before it is too late. On behalf of all Africans, like I've said everywhere I've gone, it is time never to take children in any learning process like a pack of potatoes in the hope they'll produce chips. Big mistake. It is time to diagnose and know the strength I'm not talking career. The strength of your learner beforehand, before thinking, they belong to the four walls of a classroom. Dokas Kimono, UBC News.